Good morning. All right. Well, things down a little bit this morning. Had a little bounce off of the lows there. Was that? No, it was earlier. I thought maybe it was on that jobs report. Didn't really. Well, maybe that's what that spike up was. I think it increased a little bit more than expectations. Um, and came right back in again. So it's on this little support here. This is this head and shoulders top that we talked about it's sitting on here. And I think I'm thinking it might hold here today. You know, it's three days down off of the low. It's holding here. Maybe a stabilization day. I mean, ultimately, I think it comes down to this area here. Um, Yes, yesterday, you know, we were finding a bunch of stuff that looked pretty good. That looked like they can go different stocks that could go higher. And then at the end of the day, you know, sellers just came in and took control again. Um, oh, look at it. Think maybe things could make a little bit of a turnaround today. Um, you know, these are reach a neutral level here. Many times when this breath gauge gets up here and markets start to correct it tends to be a pretty good area um around the zero line where things stabilize so that and it is sitting on support it's been holding here for a bit um and we'll see we'll see if it uh can at least have a stabilization day here so just looking at the futures. Let's see, they're down a bit. And it's kind of, you know, a lot of times I say prices have reached their destination. So when we were looking for things to top out, markets to top out there, NASDAQ was up against the, the resistance, the uh, quarterly options expirations, and so on. And it started this correction. And things have just worked themselves down and into this support level where these pivots are. And so we'll see if, if they can turn around a bit. That's typically, you know, the way, what it would do. You can see the futures here, pretty erratic and, and whippy, but trying to uh, ultimately, you know, is hold here, see if it goes up a little, a bit. Yeah, it, it is a head and shoulders top on the spiders. That's, you know, what I pointed out that, you know, we talked, we talked about that. So, we have to see if it, it'll break. It doesn't mean it's going to break today. Ideally, you know, if it went sideways for a day and it, it can't go up and it breaks, I think but that's going to be a better scenario. Sometimes we wish that it would just go straight down. But this has been a strong upward move, really not measured by the breath, you know, which we spoke about, that it should have it went higher and it didn't. Um, but you'll see, ultimately, I, it, it should come down here. So when we look at SPX, I've already put my measured move scenario down here based on that. So it's it's opening down here, right? And so it's opening on the support. So it'll gap down a, a little bit. And typically, we'll see if the buyers are there. And whatever we'll you know tomorrow, you know Friday, and into next week, of course. Um, you know if it does have a, a turnaround day here, and then ultimately we'll see. Maybe it tries to test forty four hundred, or and it can't get there. That'll be resistance now, and you know then if we get, I would prefer to see a turn. Meaning, why? You know it comes down here, you get a green day. Buyers are over zealous, you know, after this run up. And if that fails and you get a measured kind of move lower into this support, that would be a good situation for short term longs. And we see where it all, where it all goes from there. Um, and ultimately, I think things have to uh, work themselves out where, you know, it takes a few weeks of working this off whatever that looks like we'll see it as it un as it unfolds but this is you know a measured a head and shoulders type of a top 
this is a, a measured kind of a move that often plays out. And it often plays out where it just comes down to this major support level. Um, so why do this? Yeah, I don't know. It's entertaining. <laughs> I've seen it happen so many times over the years. So these measurements sometimes do, do work out. Um, but they, you know, whether you're looking at something like this or if you started looking at Fibonacci levels and all that, all these type type of more esoteric analyses, 99% of the time, they just line up eventually at, at some support level just like that. Um, so with that being said, for today, um, I had 4320. You know, it, it, things are down here a little bit. I think Jake's got 4315. If it if it does dip uh, at the open and you get some juice, definitely try to go lower. So there is 40, this juice here at 4315 now. Earlier this when I first looked, it wasn't. So that's 70 by 80. So that's doable. Um, 4320 is a buck, buck 10. And then this 40. 420, I just can't imagine it getting up there today. Um, did I put that right? 4420? Or did I not change from yesterday? Or... No, there's nothing, there's nothing there. I should have been probably 43. 43.95. So with the, yeah, 4,395, so 4,400. So if this does hold here, right? So with that, that thought in mind, um, if it does hold, well, here, where I have this alert, and it starts to turn up, yeah, on my note card over here, I've got, um, 44, I would go for 4405. Anytime you can get above the whole number, if they, you know, there's a premium there. Absolutely. So and then let me see what the futures are doing. They're just hanging here. So if, if, if I think it's going to wiggle around you see it's coming down here, it's on, it's, it's here. And, um, you know, maybe if it flips up a bit, we can get the, the 4405 on SPX. Pretty everything kind of looking the same thing. This is pulling back. It's on, it's on that same support level there. You know, just looking over to the left. Um, you know, we've got these pivots. It's, it's, it's stable. YM, it's on its its pivot area. It's on that support. It's kind of just worked its way down there. This is on, you know, it's creating support. Showed some relative strength yesterday, and then it it gave it up. You know, this was this was green. It was near the high of the day. You can see the pivots there on the hourly chart. You know, and it couldn't hold on to it, and you know, that pulled back. And let's, let's see these transports. You know, they held up. These don't you don't get the pre-market data. Um, so you know, overall, um, you know, after the run, you know, yesterday said they're grudgingly coming down, and that's that's exactly what they're doing. You know, there's buyers on, on the dip, they can't take it much higher. Uh, it's just part of the process of uh, a short-term correction. You know, we'll reach some support and uh, and we'll see. We get a turnaround day and can it follow through at all? Or, do, or, you know, the other scenario of, you know, we get the turn, we get the turnaround day. It tries to flip up and fails. And then, you know, you get the, you know, the measured move down, down to here. So we come up with these scenarios and then we see how it unfolds in, in the moment. Um, VIX up here a little bit this morning, the market down a little bit, VIX up a little bit. 
So any any time, whether it's a volatility index, a stock, an ETF, whatever, when I see a shelf like this and it breaks down, well, that says it's going lower, <laughs> obviously, but you always want to hold that a little suspect. I mean, it's bearish. But you know, this is down quite a bit. And um, sometimes, you know, especially in this market, you just tend to have these failures and these wiggles. Ultimately, it, you know, a pattern like that rolls over. But um, anytime you start to get a breakdown, you know, things get extended, it's going sideways, it breaks. You got to bring your stop above the high prior to the breakdown bar. It's just trading plan, mechanical, systematic, call it whatever. That's that's the process. Interest rates, you know, up here a little bit. You know, we talked about this, uh, keeping an eye on these 13 weeks. And, you know, you hear them talking. I heard them on CNBC this morning. They said like two thirds of the ones that vote um, are with Powell as far as figuring in and, you know, one of the 50 basis points. And for whatever reason, others think they don't know what they're doing. There's always somebody who thinks they're smarter than someone else, of course. But hey, we look at the chart. And uh, I said yesterday, if this starts working its way up, the consensus is beginning to believe what they're saying, that they're going to raise interest rates. And you know, I don't know. Well, if you heard um, England raise their interest rates this morning, so the world starts to slow down, everything else starts to slow down. And that's the idea with inflation. But how much does it slow down and within a certain amount of time? So that's why they, they start not going as rapidly as they were waiting. So they stall this time. And then next month, we'll just see uh, what they're going to do. Okay. Dollar flip-flopping around. And we talked about it being on this little support here. Um, you know, it's, it's up a little bit with the interest rates being up a little bit. Uh, you can see the weekly chart. You know, just like everything else, support, resistance, look to the left. You know, deep retracement, pulling back. We'll see if it can make a turn or not. Mm -hmm. This looks lower. It's on the 200 MA. Um, not really much support there. I'm sitting on support. There's just no interest. It's just too messy. When I see a chart like this, just, just stay away from it. Uh, crude oil down a bit, but within this trading range that we've been looking at, there's just nothing to do there, but wait and see. Set alerts at the top of the range, the bottom of the range. See what they're going to do. Bitcoin, what lit a fire under that? My gosh. My gosh. Is inflation, is inflation still matters? Well, yeah. Jose, of course it matters. With short-term interest rates up like that, you know, the things that you borrow short-term or intermediate term are more expensive. You know, I mean, I... I just, you know, my own experience with, with that, and I mentioned this in the green room a month ago, I was thinking to, you know, flip my car, you know, and getting another one. And, um, you know, usually the, the, the leases, the lease, you know, over the years with interest rates being stable, they, they would run like 1500, 1600 a month, give or take whatever options. And you know, I think, let me turn this this one car in during the whatever, blah, blah, blah. I had a you know, the car wife drowned in it. I had to buy one that was no cars available because of the, the supply demand things. But anyway, um, you know, for this same kind of car, I typically get, they were asking like 2,900 a month to lease it. I'm like, you guys are out, you know, I'm not there out of their mind. It's just the way things are. So yes, inflation matters and high interest rates matter. Um, you know, Go buy a steak, go buy whatever. And uh, well, you know, I've been of the opinion that to some degree we're already in a recession. 
when you start hearing about tens of thousands of people getting laid off, you know, I, I think this whole COVID thing, which, you know, they, they over blew it with all the money. They haven't even been able to spend it all. They, you know, made the market rip higher, as you know, and then, you know, the hangover, the hangover came, all these people not going to work because they were getting checks from the government. So everything is messed up because of that, you know, people going back to work and getting certain jobs. And so I think these, these numbers just really aren't based on historical norms because they're not. And um, they keep raising interest rates. Look, expenses go up and it's just normal for people to start, however you feel it, right? To start saying, well, you know, I'm not going to spend money on steak. I'll eat hamburgers, but you know, you see these cruise lines doing well, pent up demand there. They're they're going to go on vacation no matter what. So things are all screwed up. Look, it was um, Jim Mercedes S five S, I think the S five eighties now. So you know, that's what it was. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't think, I mean, look, we'll see what how things shape up today. And I said they're on support. We'll see if they can make a uh, a stabilization day, and if they can hold on to any gain. So, ultimate, ultimately, you know, the big opportunity should be prices coming down to these obvious significant levels. And making some kind of a turn there where we get some great swing trades. Um, so in, until then, you know, we'll just uh, be a little more cautious and uh, a little more short term. All yours, Dan. Good morning. Right, we don't have. Too many earnings trades. Right here, KBH, housing's been on fire. And up and down a little bit, 51 and change. Could be a short-term top. Couple in the green room were trading this MTH yesterday. Still looks fantastic. Well, Tesla, Greg, we should have bought a put on that yesterday. I mean, that's a beautiful 180 daily, uh, weekly supply mode. The problem is, Thomas, is the VIX so low, the premiums are so darn low. And I, I wasn't as comfortable doing a 10 DTE on this or nine, whatever it was. Um, so as I, I was all over this, I posted in Telegram that we would do a 275, 280 for Friday. It was 50 cents. And then when I went to look at it into the close, it went down to 30 cents. So do you want to put it on for 30 cents? That's a personal decision. I like I like closer to the um, one, you know, 10%. Captain Duncan, um, somebody emailing me here. Uh, Captain might give a, a buy setup. Duncan, I don't like. Um, but look at Captain. I, I sent it in Telegram as a bottoming pattern right here. And wow, that thing almost doubled. CMC, 48. Ah, it's gapping up top of the range. We can find 10 times better. All right, that was KBH, ACN. Uh, breakout failure, down to two. Ooh, that's an ugly gap, 298. All right, so that's damaged. And that was the climb on the weekly. I, I have no idea how to trade it, so we'll come back. 
overstock 22 and a half. It's a bullish gap. We'll watch it on a pullback. Captain, no, Captain is, um, that's the company that makes uh, Captain Morgan. SCS, opening flat, no pattern. FTS, no pattern. BRI 160, so bearish gap. We'll see what it does. CMC, oh yeah, you just mentioned that one. Um, GM, GMS, I like the best of, of the earnings trades here today of the very few. It's a little bull flag here and a strong uptrend. It's gapping up a buck, a buck and a half or six. Yeah. Let's watch that on a pullback. I got it in this middle window. A couple others. Uh, Boeing. We've been watching for an entry, but now, you know, I don't I don't know what the news is, but that's that's a deep retracement from this pivot to that pivot. So now that's a questionable breakout. It needs it needs to heal and chop around and give us some other setup but since it's gapping the support here 30 minute high might consider a put spread for tomorrow on this gme i guess i'll go home by the ticker and that's a buy setup i see it capping under yesterday's low though i got an alarm at 24.75 but that is an amazing recovery off a nasty gap. And then you got a buy set up over the bottoming tail. So it's a very tradable pattern over yesterday's high. 780, yeah, I mean, that's what it's been. Oh, 787. No, that's different than the trip, than the, um, the max. No, that's the max is 737 max is what got him into trouble over the last couple of years with the with the two crashes, remember? SPR is a supplier to Boeing, so that I kind of view him as the cousin. And cap him down here. We'll see what it does. And Katos. What the heck happened with this yesterday? That's an igniting bar on igniting volume. But I mean, that, that bar is way too big for me to do anything with it. I'm docking. All right, this had a nice big move. A little breakout failure from a climb. Now, see, you know, we always talk about getting on board extended stocks and market being extended. And far from the 20. And if you if you either are trailing something like that or looking to get in some type of little continuation pattern, you gotta have your eye on the exit door. And that's exactly what happened there. Uh, that was a it was a climb. Up. So that's you know, see how low it can go. See where it wants to turn. FCX, a little bear, a little bull flag here. Kind of got, you know, a big old flag. But that's a small little bull flag. That's worth watching. Root, I don't know what the heck went on with this thing yesterday. Look, somebody knew something into the clues. Gapping up huge. I just think you got rocks in your head. Something rallied from six bucks, and now you're buying it pre market at 15. Big old bottom. It's a takeover, Dan. Takeover oh. bid. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Well, that that's different than speculation. Mm -hmm. All right, Google was on our list yesterday. That is a textbook head and shoulders. Momentum move, breakout failure, back down, bearish consolidation for two weeks, closing breakdown. That looks great. And that's another one we tried doing a, a call spread. 
you know, it's something ridiculous, like 20 cents over the week's high. So we, if you have a bearish bias with a bearish pattern, then short it for day trade or swing trade, it, it looks lower. ROIV, that's a nice gap breakout here. This might be a bio, yeah, it's a bio, um, but you know, strong. I'm not gonna mess with it because bio. U car, now it's gapping down, but look, something happened yesterday where it, that's a, what we call, or I call, a, that's, a, that's a something something bar. It's been in a coma. And then boom, something's changed. Side range expansion. Now it's gapping under this. So I don't know. Let's keep an eye on it. Boeing. Any other computer? I'll put so I'll put you car down here. Pixie, another one. What the heck? This, wow. This is what we call a bear trap. Look at all that massive dumping. I mean, the, the chart yesterday said it looks like it's going to zero. But this is a reason why I don't short stocks under five bucks is you know they get so low they are subject it provided they're a real company whatever that means they are susceptible to you know buyouts or gaps or, or private equity firms making a bid for them whatever but that that's a big shock bar we'll see if it has any legs to it ape you know this is one of those derivative things to amc their bonds or something or other. And I don't know. Gapping up, we'll see what it does. That's a big gap, actually. Wow. 20 cents, that's over 10%. It's a monster gap. Yeah. All right, Tesla, we talked about. That was a, what we call a bear 180. Cyber, kind of a one, two, three. Once it Once again, it had no juice or put spread, or maybe it didn't have weeklies. Um, F bin here, I got an alarm at 68, 100% retracement, bullish consolidation, bullish weekly, monthly. So for a new swing, this one, this one looks pretty darn good. I got, I got the alarm, so we'll look at it. If it hits, IBR, a little continuation thing. But, you know, patterns like this, I think you need the broader market to help push them up. Otherwise, they're doing nothing. And the D-Dog, another head and shoulders like Google. Closing breakdown, once again, I tried getting this in a, a call spread here. No juice. I mean, we're definitely going to have to start looking out for next week. Uh, C Krill. That would be a no-brainer put spread, no juice. Uh, par. Actually, I like the gap down here. Uh, let's let's set an alarm at twenty-four ninety. Is that that's a one, two, three? Twenty-four ninety. L H. I I like the fifteen minute a lot for a possible day trade into the gap fill soon, and the fact that it's not gapping down is relative strength. All right, this GME. I don't. I don't. You know, with the gap down, I'll I'll set alarm, but. It doesn't look like it's going to make the turn, as we call it. 
Um, SWK low alarm. This was a core that I'm I'm looking at on a pullback. So this is good. I'm glad it's pulling back. Set a new alarm lower, 86. Up alarm, 89.50. CF out. Oh yeah, we moved, we, we sold a third in the strength yesterday. Yeah, our stop hit too. No, uh, we had, we had a, a break even. Or, well, my alarm didn't go off, but I had break even stop on the back half. Let me see. Charlie Oxford. Um, supercomputer CM SMCI could make a turnaround day today. Uh, yeah, I had that on my short list. We sold a call spread up there. I mean, yeah, I, I think any bounce is going to be short lived. You know? Let's see. All right, DUI, we got a low alarm. Where's our stop? No, our stop's 105.82, though. I just had an early alarm. We are in. At 105.82. All right, so that would be break even. But we sold a third in the strength yesterday. All right, Charlie Foxter out on a profit. Yeah, we made a Charlie Fox drop, made a, a buck fifty on the first third. And Q's nice reversal here on the five minute. IWM the weakest. Yeah, let's see, we have $20 short puts doing fine, GNRC. 